that last year, fraud cases in the UK more than doubled, making 2023 the second biggest year for scams in two decades. But have you ever heard of supermarket gift card scams? Well, they are, as we know, a popular gift choice and can be used to buy anything from groceries to electricals and toys. And they're usually located by the tills at the end of your shop. And Action Fraud reported £13.5 million was lost in gift card fraud alone last year. Well, one person that knows all too well the traumatising effects of these scams is Debbie Horwood, whose 80-year-old mum was scammed out of £115,000. Debbie joins us now to tell us more alongside our consumer expert, Alice Spear. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Debbie, the first thing I have to ask is, firstly, how is your mum at the moment? Because, obviously, she's been through quite some trauma. Mm -hmm. She's doing really well, okay. actually, all considering she's got a lot of support and help from the NHS and friends and family. Mm -hmm. So what was it that alerted you to there being a problem? Um, she reached out to one of my brother's friends to borrow some money, which was an instant red flag to him, mm -hmm. so he made my brother aware. We then confronted my mum the following day to ask her why she felt that she needed to borrow this money from my brother's friend. And she said that she was helping um, a friend with a business transaction. To which we asked, who is your friend? What, what, can you give us a bit more detail? And she said, well, it's an old friend from school, uh, Richie Blackmore. The, the... I was like, why does Richie Blackmore need help from you, Mum, with a business transaction? It doesn't make sense. How has he communicated with you? I don't understand. You need to explain this. I mean, the, the emotional roller coaster that mm -hmm. we've been through is just immense. Well, I can only imagine it. And this this went on for quite a long time, right? Over the course of a year or so. Well, we've established that the transactions that um, are the most poignant ones were over 14 months. And I had started to notice a massive change with my mum mm -hmm. over the last year uh, with various um, odd things that mm. she was doing. Well, it made you worry that she had Alzheimer's, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It, it was in June uh, where she was looking after me um, following an operation, so she was spending a lot more time with me, so I was able to um, obviously observe more things that I would do uh, ordinarily. Um, and it really concerned me, so I did phone the doctors. I took her for a memory test, and the, the doctor had sort of... Um, we come to realise that she's 80 and I yeah. just have to accept that there's going to be some changes mm -hmm. with my mum. But it was really sad because I felt like I was losing my best friend. Oh, and yeah. to have to accept that my mum's old yeah. but... and this is my new mum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did the scammers get in touch with your mum? It started on social media. Um, she'd put a post um, about cycling to school with Richie Blackmore because they came from the same area in yeah. Heston. And, obviously, this person has gone through her Facebook page, picked up the name and then created a profile with this picture, obviously done their research on school, um, Heston area. So, obviously, when they reached out to my mum, she didn't for one minute think it wasn't him. So, so... she thought it was Richie, who she'd gone to school with. Yeah. He's the guitarist from Deep Purple. That's right. And it absolutely wasn't him, mm -hmm. but she believed she was talking to him. She was told not to tell any of the family um, because of his profile and just keep the relationship, the, you know, the contact that they had just to themselves. And this, this sort of gift card transaction, yeah. this is actually the first time I've ever heard of a scam. And we'll get into the details mm. in a little bit with you, Alice. This, this is the first time I've actually ever heard of anything like this. And it's quite unique. So this could be something that's happening regularly yeah, and really I... kind of sort of fooling people. This... Um, these were transactions that were happening daily in the end, right? These yeah. were sort of... I mean, £115,000 is a lot of money and split that for, across a year. These were vouchers and he was getting her to send codes. It That's right, codes. isn't it? Yeah, she would go into the supermarkets daily. Yeah. Um, I mean, the amount of monies that she spent on a daily basis was just insane. Um, she would uh, take the code off of the Apple gift card and then send it over on this app um, communication app that he'd set up for her as well. And she believed the, the code that she was sending was for some sort of investment into shares into something greater. Some business arrangement. Mm -hmm. 
Right. right. Okay. I think this is a good po point to bring mm. you in, Alice. These gift cards, and I've got to make sure, we see things like this all the time yeah. in the supermarket. Yeah. And these are being used in a fraudulent way yep. that then hoodwinked Debbie's mum. A gift card is a lovely thing. It's a way of giving a relative or a friend uh, a present without buying them a present that they don't want. Yeah. It's a well-established thing. You know, I used to get £5 pounds mm -hmm. of book token when yes. I was younger. Um, but they are also tantamount to cash. So if you buy a gift card of high worth, an Apple one or a Google one, usually cashed in for uh, in-app purchases or yeah. uh, gaming, if you buy one and you give somebody else the code for that, you are giving them the value of that card. So what Val was doing was going into supermarkets repeatedly and buying £400, uh, £200, £100, £600 worth of gift cards. You find the gift card in the, on the stand, you take it up to the till, you load it with yeah. the amount of money, yeah. and then you walk out with it, and then she was obviously passing on that code. Yeah. Once you have passed on that code, money gone. Yeah. Money gone, money virtually untraceable. You're not going to get that money back, which is why they don't do it by bank transfers, why they don't do it by credit card. They come off the banking system, they come off all kind of social media, they take you into another place where they can manipulate you. And that's what they did to the point mm -hmm. of, well, you can say what happened to your mum in the end. I mean, it's just hideous. But... Go on, Debbie. Uh... So two weeks after um, me and my brother found out, we had decided that we would keep this to ourselves and not tell my dad because he hadn't been very well and we yeah. just didn't think that he would be able to comprehend yeah. what has gone on. You know, my mum has given away all of oh. her inheritance and, you know, her life was going to be very different after that with no sort of slush fund, so yeah, to speak. Course. So we said... Uh, between me and my brother and my son, that we would keep this to us, um, keep her dignity and do what we needed to do to keep her happy. Did you call the police? Yeah, the police were um, informed straight away, actually. Um, so we found out on the Friday and we contacted them on the Saturday. Um, two weeks after that, we, I took her, we had to go to the bank so that I could have uh, organised my third-party agreement. Um, and anyway, it was quite a stressful afternoon and the following morning she uh, she attempted suicide. Oh, goodness me. It, but the, the, the effect and the impact something that this can have, as you know yourself, is just tremendous. What, what happens to the individual, the person that's posing yeah. as Richie? What, what, what happens... Is he traceable? Is this because it's on a code? Is it, is it virtually impossible to track somebody like this? Well, we did try. Um, we've got a friend um, that has a private investigator um, contact. And they did. I did give the card, uh, the, the contact number, and we've located it to being used from um, a town in China called Dalian. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've took advice from Hong Kong police as well, who said that really any transactions from there, the money would be washed through to Burma and Thailand, and it's really oh, untraceable. Right. Yeah. Alice, we've got to try and help other people that might be watching yeah, right absolutely. now. Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, we had never heard of this scam when ever. we talked about it yesterday. So, And that's interesting. But I tell you who does know about it, retailers. Right. Every supermarket, every high street retailer that sell, sells a gift card knows that this is a crime. This is what happens. If I go to my ATM, I've got a daily limit. Yeah. Yeah. If I try and get cash back at the till, yes. I've got a limit. Yeah. And yet, an 80-year-old can go time after time after time um, and buy huge well, value. Well, she goes to the same supermarket. No, yep. she... Um, th in... There are a few uh, supermarkets that she visited frequently, but she basically went to all of the so supermarkets. So she was... Local. She, she, yeah, cos she was being told, don't go to the same place all the time, maybe. I don't know that they um, were telling her, don't go to them, but she just drifted around. Round. OK. And have Alice, a little what, look. Yeah. I spent yesterday afternoon going through Val's bank statements yeah. mm -hmm. and to, to pull out um, transactions that were more than £250, mm -hmm. because yeah. many of the supermarkets have told me that they would flag that up. So you can just... Oh, well, that's quite fast, but you can see... Farnborough Morrison's 400, Farnborough That's Morrison's 400, day. Waitress oh, Fleet 400, yeah. Morrison's Farnborough, again, 400. 300 transactions in that same Morrison store for £400. And nobody thought this eight-year-old eight yeah. woman shouldn't be doing this. 
You know, Val in total spent over £31,000 in one Morrison store. Yeah, there has to be... Right, there has so, to yeah, be police, where's the protection? Is right. there any protection? Well, the supermarkets were all genuinely horrified and sorry for what had happened to Val. Um, I will read their responses. They've all said it's a known crime and Val was... You know, but they should have known. Val was repeatedly mm. going up to them, buying those high-value... Um, uh, cards. The British Retail Consortium has said we sympathise with victims of the scams where vulnerable individuals are often the target. Retailers are educating their staff. That's what it's about. It's about educating yeah. your staff. And I'm sorry, supermarkets, you have not got it right yet. Um, all in the lo one local Waitrose store, she spent over £21,000. Waitrose has said we're really sorry to hear about this story. We've issued additional guidance to our shops and looking at what safeguards we can put in place. Morrison's, where she spent nearly 32000 in one store, 19000 in another Morrison store, has said they take Gosh. gift card fraud very seriously. They've also said any gift card transaction over £250 would flag up uh, an alert. Well, I'm sorry, but yesterday afternoon, one of Debbie's relatives went into that very same Morrison's and tried to make three £300 purchases, and all of them were going to go through the till right. before right, they pulled okay. out of the purchase. I've just got a couple more that I've got to read. Sainsbury's said, be assured we're taking this extremely seriously, fully investigating Valerie's case. We include fraud warnings at the gift card fixtures. Our till systems limit the number of gift cards that can be sold at any one time. Boots were the only company that actually stopped Valerie buying gift cards, right, but only right. after she'd spent £12,000 in one branch. Um, but they are... And then Tesco's um, are investigating Miss Hallward's case and have identified a number of transactions. Tesco's are the only supermarket, actually, who have offered to uh, give a refund and are refunding Valerie okay. £10,000. Supermarkets, you have to step yeah. up on this. This is not good enough. And from the head office perspective, that's one thing. Yeah, I think... As a community, yeah. and as you know, in, in, in those sort of small towns and, and, and within the area, you know if you see the same person. Yeah. Like, like, it's sort of that yeah. sort of custom. She's chatty. Yeah. She's quite, you know, she yeah, stands yeah, yeah. out, doesn't she? was she? known. They all knew. When yeah. I went round to the supermarkets to make them aware of, of this scam, yeah, yeah. they all knew my mum. Yeah. They knew her. Is, um, sure. is, is there any protection? At all no, in this situation. No, that's, why, so that's, that's why this is the scam. That's why yeah. we're here. Yeah, and that's no why protection. I got action fraud. There weren't any known figures. Right. I got action fraud to pull those figures from last year and find out that thirteen and a half million pounds were lost was lost last year. Have the conversation with your relatives. Yeah. Look after them. Make it known mm. that you shouldn't be embarrassed. You shouldn't be, you know, feel stupid about this. This no. is a very, very horrible crime. Yeah. And Richie sent a message as well, hasn't he? He did, yes. It's obviously nothing to do with Richie, but he does care very deeply about what happened to your mother. That's kind. I just learned about Valerie being scammed out of a lot of money by somebody who supposedly is me. I would never reach out to somebody on the social media or the internet because I don't personally use that. I just hope that they catch the uh, thief that's done this and that uh, she gets her health back and everything works out fine. So all the best, Richie Blackmore. Ah, oh. Thank you. Hopefully your mum will watch that and get yes, some so. sort of comfort. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming thank in, Debbie. Thank you, and please thank send you. Al up yeah. to your mum. I will do. Thank, thank you, you Alice. Thank you. Keep up the good work. If you've been affected by anything we've spoken about here, please do go to our free This Morning app, where there are helplines and charities you can reach out to. Yes.